You've all been complaining, oh, you use too many tools, too many appliances. This fills our comment section every single day. Tools exist to make our lives easier, not to make things possible. So today, I'm gonna prove that. By cooking without a kitchen. You don't have to have fancy equipment to make great food. We're making breakfast sandwiches with homemade buns, spaghetti and meatballs, and a McFlurry. All I have are these tools in front of me. Five handheld tools, a pan, a pot, and some bowls. You're also gonna need a heat source, obviously. No kitchen, no fancy appliances, no electricity, no oven. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? First we begin with a spaghetti and meatball. This is fresh ground. All you need is a large knife, either a cleaver or a chef knife, and begin by cutting up one pounder, 450 grams of boneless chuck roast into very thin slices and repeat that with a quarter pounder 113 grams of pancetta. But before you begin, I want you to think about something. Think about something that really hurt your feelings or made you feel sad. What in your life are you longing for that causes you to claw at the idea of your mortal coil every single day? Well, take all that and go ham on this meat. Carefully but vigorously, repeatedly chop away at your beef over and over and over. Don't go too hard here, all right? If you get too emotional, maybe take a step back and also keep your hand completely free of the board because it's very dangerous and Papa wants you safe and to have all your fingers. That being said, as the meat spreads out, gather it back up, place it back in the center, compress it, and you can keep doing this until the meat is as fine as you like. But ideally, it needs to be fine enough to hold the shape of a ball very easily. Then just pop that bad boy into a bowl, add a quarter of a medium onion, add that to the bowl, along with three cloves of finely chopped garlic, three quarters of a teaspoon or three grams of fresh ground black pepper, half a cup or 50 grams of fine dry breadcrumbs, two teaspoons or 14 grams of fine sea salt, two thirds of a cup or 160 milliliters of whole milkies, mixed together by hand till thoroughly combined, then just shape that into balls, as big or as small as you like. Size is always kind of a preference thing, I feel like. Let us know, what kind of balls do you like? Now get yourself a 12-inch skillet, non-stick or not, I don't care. Heat over medium high, lightly oil that up with vegetable oil, add in your balls, and sear for two minutes. Sear the other side for another two minutes, remove your balls, then add three tablespoons or 40 grams of inexperienced or extra virgin olive oil. Reduce the heat to medium and add in the remaining three quarters of your onion that's been finely chopped, three cloves of thinly sliced garlic, one tablespoon or one gram of finely chopped fresh rosemary, season it to taste with salt, cook till just fragrant, about 20 seconds. Then add 24 ounces or 680 gram can of crushed tomatoes along with half a cup or 120 milliliters of water. Add a pinch of sugar, season to taste with salt, bring up to a simmer or a medium heat, add your meatballs back and let that simmer for 10 minutes. Be sure to roll your meatballs around occasionally to make sure they cook evenly. Then while that's simmering, boil one pound of spaghetti. According to your package directions, how was that accent by the way? Can I get a rating in the comments please? Make sure to salt your pasta water as salty as the sea. Drain your pasta water. Then at that point, combine your sauce and spaghetti for holy matrimony. Toss together until combined, serve on plates with some fresh Parmigiano Reggiano grated on top, maybe a healthy glug of olive oil. And let's see if those meatballs are any good being hand chopped. So obviously we know what this pasta tastes like. It is so hot out here, I don't wanna eat this. The pasta sauce is fantastic. It requires very little effort, minimal pans, we already know that. But I know what you came here for, my meatball. This is ridiculously tender. Holy sh**, it's probably one of the best meatballs I've ever had. I think we might've figured something out here. A more rustic and coarse grind leads to most idealistic meatballs you'll get. It's tender, it's soft, it melts in your mouth. It's like the filet mignon of meatballs. I need someone to come try this. Kevin, you wanna try my meatball? That's amazing. It was very juicy. It felt, I think coarse was a good word that you used because when I take a bite, I agree with you, filet mignon of meatballs. Thank you, Kevin. You see, no grinder necessary. On to our biggest challenge yet. Next, a New York BEC. It's always commonly said as one singular word, okay? Bacon, egg, and cheese. That's one word, not three or four. Or I, I don't know, I didn't really count it, to be honest. First, we're making these buns with no stand mixer and no oven. That's right, pal. For our buns, in a medium-sized bowl, mix together half a cup or 120 grams of water and half a cup or 120 grams of whole milk. Two tablespoons or 28 grams of granulated sugar and two and a half teaspoons or 10 grams of instant yeast. Whisk together until dissolved, then mix in three and a half tablespoons or 50 grams of vegetable oil. Then whisk in one egg plus one egg yolk until combined. Finally, add one and a half teaspoons or 14 grams of fine sea salt and three cups or 450 grams of all-purpose flour. Mix together by hand till you get a shaggy dough. If the dough's a little too wet, you can add a little extra flour a tablespoon at a time. Turn over onto a work surface that's clean, hopefully, and knead for three to five minutes or until smooth and lovely. I love you. Mwah. 
Plop into a grease bowl, cover with a damp towel or plastic wrap, and rise at room temperature for one hour or until doubled like this brother right here. Thank you, movie magic. Wow. Punch out that yeasty gas. Divide that into eight equally sized pieces, roll into toit balls, and place in a lightly greased 12 inch non stick skillet, ideally one with some depth. Lightly grease the tops with vegetable oil, cover with a lid, and proof for 30 minutes. Don't cook them yet. Now, the actual cooking process is surprisingly easy. After that 30 minutes, place over very low heat with your lid on until the bottoms are browned nicely and they're cooked about 70% of the way through, about 10 to 15 minutes. Invert onto a plate or your lid and carefully slide back into the pan. Now, if they tear at this point, or if you're in a similar situation where you realize your lid has an enormous lip on the edge and there's absolutely no way for you to slide it back into the pan, then just place them back raw side down as gently as you can without degassing them too much. Cover back up with the lid and allow to cook for eight to 10 more minutes or until baked through and browned on the other side as well. While that's baking, you can make your garlic butter in a medium pan. Add half a cup or 120 grams of salted, not unsalted butter. Just trust me here. Place it over medium heat, and as soon as that's completely melted, cut off the heat and add three cloves of garlic, finely chopped or grated, one tablespoon or three grams of finely chopped fresh parsley, one tablespoon or three grams of very thinly sliced fresh chives. Stir until combined and brush that directly over the top of your finished buns and let out a nice but subtle moan. I mean, sigh of gratitude for the flavor you just bestowed <laughs> upon these buns and let those cool until warm, but ideally room temp. The rest of this is very easy. Obviously, you need some cooked off bacon, so cook it in the same nonstick pan that you did the buns. Heat over medium. Constantly flip until cooked to your liking. That's literally it. Drain it on a paper towel, you know? There you go. For the eggs, whisk together two to four eggs. Heat your same nonstick pan over medium. Add in a knoll of unsalted butter. Once melted and bubbling, add in your eggs and season them lightly to taste with salt and pepper. Pause. I know Gordon Ramsay says don't season your eggs before you cook them. I love Gordon. He's literally my idol, but I'm telling you, it will not make your eggs go watery if you cook them like I'm about to. Continuously stir with a wooden spoon or a rubber spatula. Anyway, once the eggs are cooked to a loose, soft scramble, clean out your pan and then in that same pan, butter it up again with a tablespoon or two of butter. Heat to medium. Once it's melted and bubbling, slice one of your buns in half. Toast until nicely brown. Now, onto the bottom half of your bun. You can also add a slice of American cheese because it's a bacon, egg, and cheese. Remember, not a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich from Brooklyn. Then push your buns to one side of the pan and add your soft scrambled mixture in one pile in the pan. Allow that to heat back up for about 30 seconds. This is basically going to create the most luxurious scrambled egg circlet you can have. Now layer on a slice of, yes, American cheese. Close the lid, melt the cheese, mayo and ketchup on your top bun, place down your bacon, place down your cheesy eggs. You know, assemble that bad boy. Top it off with your top bun and look at that, shimmering. Now let's taste test. It's like we're in New York, but not. We're in the great outdoors of Texas with a bacon, egg, and cheese. All right, if you don't know what a bacon, egg, and cheese is, then why don't you go watch our video? Links in the description. You like that? Free promo? All right. Wow. For some reason, this bread kind of came out like a commercial bread that you would get in those like rolls that they use in a bodega. It's got the fine crumb. It's a little gummy, but in a good way. Somehow we managed to create almost a closer version to a bacon, egg, and cheese than our actual bodega video by accident by using less tools. What did we learn? Hmm? What do you think we learned? No stay mixer, no oven, no thermometer, this or that. We just put it together and look, see, all is possible. Now moving on. Last but not least, a McFlurry with no machines whatsoever. And no, we're not using the plastic bag method, so don't ask. But I do want to ask something. McDonald's ice cream machine is always broken, and you're telling me they could have just been doing it by hand this whole time. Well, what the hell's going on? So first, we need to make our Reese's, or specifically bars. In a bowl set over a simmering pot of water, add 12 ounces or 340 grams of semi-sweet chocolate and two teaspoons or nine grams of coconut oil. Constantly stir until melted. Then in a separate bowl, combine one cup or 250 grams of creamy peanut butter, truly the creamiest you can find. To be honest, this was not that creamy. A quarter teaspoon or Five grams of fine sea salt, two cups or 240 grams of finely ground graham crackers, two cups or 240 grams of powdered sugar, and finally one cup or 240 grams of melted and ideally browned unsalted butter. Mix together until combined and stiff. Spread that bad boy into an eight by eight baking pan, then pour your melted chocolate on top, spread that out, and let it chill in the fridge overnight. The next day, you're gonna cut it up into two inch by two inch bars, then just finely chop two of those and keep the rest in the fridge for a little treat because you deserve it. You've been a brave little soldier. For the ice cream, in a medium sized bowl, add five large egg yolks and one cup or 200 grams of granulated sugar. Whisk together until combined separately in a medium sized pot. Add one cup or 240 milliliters of whole milk and one vanilla bean scraped up to beans and two and a half cups or 600 milliliters of heavy cream. Heat over medium until steamy and hot but not boiling. Then just reduce the heat to low or a little bit of the hot stuff into your yolk mixture and whisk until combined. Repeat that process until your yolks are hot. 
Then pour your yolks back to your pot and then continuously stir and heat over low heat while never letting this mixture boil or simmer in any fashion or way whatsoever in any moment in time for the rest of our lives. Otherwise, you're gonna get scrambled eggs. It's gonna be sad. Oh, and don't forget to add a pinch of salt. After about 10 minutes, your mixture should be beautifully thickened to what I would call a nice nappe. That's the consistency of the sauce. Cool this in a bowl, set over an ice bath, that's fine. But once it's cooled, you're gonna pour it into another bowl, a fresh one, or you can clean this one out. And then in a separate bowl, or in the same ice bowl bath, right, you could pour out your ice bath and then refill it with ice. It needs to easily house and cusp the bottom of your custard bowl easily, though. Pour in some rock salt over the ice to make it extra chilly. Place your custard bowl on top and press into the ice so that the ice molds around the custard bowl easily. And all you have to do is just start whisking and also keep whisking. And after about eight to 10 minutes of constant gentle whisking, you're left with ice cream gold, borderline gelato level, hand churned ice cream. It's beautiful, it's righteous. And at this point, you're gonna add your finely chopped Reese's bars, fold it all together, plop into a nice glass or serving vessel, top with whipped cream, which is optional. And of course, some more Reese's on top, just to remind everybody. And let's see if ice cream can really be any good without a machine. I know you're watching McDonald's. This is gonna be a butt better V10. So this would probably be a lot easier if you were not outside in direct sunlight, wouldn't be this melty. Should we try the blizzard technique? Most of it stayed in there. First off, ice cream, I mean, come on. Sometimes you forget. This was even a remind, this was even a reminder for me. You use certain things in your life day to day that's supposed to make your life easier. And you think, wow, how could I live without this? There's no way. And then you have this and you're like, wait a minute, I'm in control of my own life. I can do whatever the hell I want to do. Just try to do it inside. We made three medium complex recipes without the use of a stand mixer, an ice cream machine, or an oven, none of that. Which proves you don't need to spend a lot of money to have a great meal. You just need to care, have the heart, and a little bit of technique. Maybe a kiss for me. Oh, uh, B-roll. Ugh. What? I'm trying to make ice cream here. Ugh.